My name is Dan Kweku Yaboa, Head of Sports, Despite Media. Subscribe to my YouTube page, Dan Kweku Yaboa TV. Remember to turn on the notification button and be part of the DKY family. Thank you. And thank you. Nedu, Nedu, Chairman of the University Council, acting in the stead of the Chancellor, hereby constitute this assembly as the second session of the 13th congregation of the University of Professional Studies, Accra, for the purpose of receiving the report of the Vice Chancellor on the work of the university over the past year, for the conferment of various degrees and diplomas, and presentation of awards to deserving students in the UPSA Faculty of Information Technology and Communication Studies. Congratulations and thank you. An informative update on UPSA. Ladies and gentlemen, our guest of honor and congregation speaker is none other than broadcast journalist, public speaker, and media personality, Mr. Kwan Misefa Kai. His bio can be found on page 22, so kindly allow me to be brief. Host of Peace FM's morning show, Kukuro Ko, for more than 20 years, he's also been MC for several high-profile events, including the presidential inauguration of 2017. He is founder of Kukuro Ko Charities, a charity engaged in the provision and distribution of infant incubators to health facilities across Accra. For his excellence and dedication to his career, he has been awarded Journalist of the Year 2016, Member of the Order of the Volta 2008, Torchbearer of the London Olympics 2012, and finally, Radio and Television Personality of the Decade 2010 to 2020. Graduates, ladies and gentlemen, I give you our congregation speaker, Mr. Kwame Sefa Tayi. Thank you for the very kind words, Madam Registrar. First and foremost, I'd like to thank you, Vice Chancellor, Professor Mate, for the privilege of choosing me as a guest speaker at this graduation ceremony. I feel very deeply honored to be here this afternoon to share a few thoughts with those of you who have been blessed, fortunate, strong enough to make this day. And so Chairman of Council, Dr. Kofi Ohine Kunedu, after whom this very magnificent building is named, members of the Governing Council, Vice Chancellor Professor Amate, members of Convocation staff, alumni, graduating class of 2021, members of the media, distinguished invited guests, ladies and gentlemen. I was here last week, and before last week, I was here about 20 years ago, not as a student though, as a friend, of some friends who were students here. 20 years ago, this place in its current form is not what it used to be. 20 years ago, the roads and walkways were dusty, very, and got very muddy during the rainy season. 20 years ago, this institution was called the Institute of Professional Studies. 20 years on, a lot has changed. We have tarred roads, we have paved walkways, 
We have a variety of buildings springing up all over the place, modernizing and elevating this environment. 20 years later, even the name of this institution has changed. Today, we proudly refer to it as the University of Professional Studies Accra, UPSA for short. It comes with alignment with its new status. Why am I talking about 20 years ago? Dr. Chairman, 20 years ago and today simply means this institution has progressed. It has grown up, it has matured, it is obvious to all of us that change has come. Advancement has come. But, my dear friends, it did not just happen overnight. It didn't happen simply because somebody wished that it would happen. It happened because the leadership and the staff of earlier years worked hard to lay the foundations that others, including the current vice chancellor and the current leadership, have built upon, and that is why we're where we are today. So, Mr. Vice Chancellor and your team, congratulations to you. And also congratulations to those who came before you for the transformation of this very great institution. I guess I've been talking about 20 years previously. The reason why I've rolled that is because I want to ask those of you graduating today, 20 years from today, what will be your story? 20 years from today, what will be the building blocks that you would have developed on 20 years from today what will be your dreams will they still be dreams will they still have been achieved or will they still be work in progress i am asking because you have a degree today but pace yourself and ask yourself that in 20 years from today if that degree whether it's a master's a first degree or what have you if it's not been able to elevate you professionally, socially, economically, and even psychologically, then you probably have wasted your time by coming here. My dear graduates, I entreat all of you to begin to look out there into the world, especially for those of you who are going out into the world for the first time. The world is not the kind of world that has open hands and will gladly welcome you. The world out there will not give you a drink give you a seat and make things very easy for you it is going to be a very long and hard road to success which i'm sure all of you aspire to beyond what you have today if i look at my own life and want to primarily share a few lessons with you i probably will just look at the general areas because there'll be so many specifics we probably will spend the entire day listening to my story but what i can say is that look out there because some of us did not have the advantages and privileges that those of you who are graduating today had there was no social media at the time i remember in the newsroom in radio gold those days in the mid 90s a computer was probably shared by about 15 journalists or so and you can imagine there was really not much of what we call an internet or social media today. So information was from the BBC, from West Africa magazine, from GBC. And those days you sit and it's a dial up on the internet. I don't know if prof, you may remember those days when you go on the net, you dial up, you hear, it takes forever. Today you can work from your phone. And so we have an advantage. Life has progressed. The opportunities out there to you are more and exciting than the opportunities that were out to some of us when we started out. Today, you probably don't even need a desktop. My dear graduates, talking about computers reminds me of the new age in which we are. For a broadcast journalist who started from the early 90s to today, I can tell very easily but the field of journalism has changed. 
The field of communication has changed. But ask yourselves, what do you use your internet for? What do you use social media for? Is social media a tool for sensationalism for you? Is it a tool for excitement for you? Is it a tool that you're going to do to research, to build yourself, to improve yourself, to acquire more knowledge than what you have today? As they say, the internet never forgets. The internet is good, but it also has its dangerous sides. I entreat all of you today to begin to look or to rethink your relationship with social media, with the internet. Because if you are did communication, it would always serve as a ready tool or a ready source of information. Be careful what you put there. Be careful what you look out for there. Be careful what you find there. If you're looking for knowledge, if you're looking for new skills, if you're looking for talent, if you're looking for new avenues, I'm sure you know you'll find it there. But if you're also looking for gossip, sensationalism, and salacious information, I'm sure you'll find it there. As I said earlier, the world will not welcome you with open arms. It will take you through the mail, and I pray that the academic qualification you have, the drill you've gone through whilst you're here, has prepared you not very adequately for the task ahead of you. Some of you may have jobs, others may not. For those of you who have jobs, I pray that whatever it is that you've acquired here will put you in positions where you would advance in your fields of endeavor. But for those of you who are out there coming fresh onto the job market, as they say in Akan, <laughs> it is not an easy task. Most young people today have a sense of entitlement. You leave school, especially for those of you who are going to start working, you leave school and you think that the world owes you a job. And you better, sir. It is not that easy. But I wish you well in all of this. Because for those of you who will be lucky enough to find jobs, ask yourselves, what kind of jobs would it be? For those of us who have a sense of entitlement, are you hoping to walk out of here straight into such a high paying job that if you're offered a startup or if you're offered you know, from somewhere that is probably below middle level management or even junior management, you would reject it. I still remember what my salary was 25 years ago. It's the equivalent of 20 CDs today. At the time, it wasn't much. It still is not much. But we began from somewhere. So do not despise small beginnings. Challenge yourself. Accept whatever situation you find yourself in but don't accept to remain there. Improve upon it, move beyond it, and whilst you're at it, remember, things don't happen overnight. Today, I've been privileged enough to share my thoughts with you as a commencement speaker at this graduation ceremony. I'm sure 20 years ago, 25 years ago, nobody will look at me twice. For those of us who think that it happens overnight, let me just tell you, it is only in the dictionary where there's success before work, as in S before W. In real life, it is always the other way around. I am sure those of you who have gone through the mill to graduate today would know that better. My dear graduates, as you step out there into the real world, also limit your expectations. When I set out, all I wanted was a job. I didn't care how much it would pay me. I wanted to get out of home. I was almost 25 years old. All I wanted was a job. Yes, I got it. I had expectations. I had dreams. I had aspirations. But I did not feel that whatever it is that I got to be doing at the time was below me. Worked hard. Worked hard. Worked hard. Improved myself. And today the story is totally different. 
There's one thing also for those of you who have faith I share with you. Whatever it is that you believe in, God, Mau, Allah, Nyankopon, Tigare, whatever. All those things have a certain path that they teach us. Believe in yourself. Believe in whatever it is that your spirituality tells you. It helps shape you. It gives you personal integrity. And as I said, ask yourself a few questions. Apply yourself diligently. Educate yourself beyond what you've acquired today. And self-develop and ask yourself in 15 years, in 20 years from today, you probably will be the person who would be the commencement speaker right here at your alma mater. I therefore entreat all of you to go out there with very few expectations, but with a diligent application of hard work, more hard work, and even more hard work. It is the only way. I'd like to share a few lines from one of my very favorite poems with you. I'm sure some of you may have seen it. It was written in 1927. It's been credited to Max Ehrman. It's titled Desiderata. I find that poem very interesting. And that the fact that it was written in 1927 and is still relevant today just tells all of you that there's nothing new that you probably can do. All you need to do is improve on what has been done. Somebody said, be humble. A lot was achieved before you were born. Whatever it is that you find, please just improve on it. A few lines from the Desideratum. As I mentioned earlier, written in 1927 by Max Ehrman, it says there may be silence. No matter their background, well, in the first eight lines of the Desiderata, he urges everyone that no matter your background, race, gender, or future, quote, go placidly amid the noise and haste. That reminds us of what peace there may be in silence. It says, as far as possible without surrender, be on good terms with all persons. Speak your truth quietly and clearly. Listen to others. Because even to the dull and the ignorant, they too have their story. Unquote. Do not be in a hurry to judge people. Because even the dull and the ignorant also have their story. Some of you will be thrust into positions of management, managing people and all of that. Let some of these things serve as a constant reminder to you. As you step out here, if you find time, Google or just download that uh, poem, The Desiderator. Read it, it would give you some deep insights. Because the same poem says, avoid loud and aggressive persons. If I may repeat, avoid loud and aggressive persons because they are vexation to the spirit. Be careful of the friends you make. Be careful of the company you keep. Not everybody means well. And that I can tell you for a fact. Think on these words as you go along. Part of the Desiderata also says, exercise caution in your business affairs. For the world is full of trickery. But let not this bind you to what virtue there is. Many persons strive for high ideals and everywhere life is full of heroism. So be positive about life. Do not depress yourself. Be excited, be enthused about the world out there that you're going into. The very last line of the Desiderator says, strive to be happy. My dear friends, in spite of the difficulties that life may throw at you, in spite of the down moments, strive to be happy in whatever that you do. Get up, dust up, show up, and participate in whatever that it is that you have set out to do. Life itself is an evolution, and I'm sure as you go along, 
you would find out from the people you meet, from the friends you make, from the moment you walk out of these doors, from the challenges, from the aspirations, and also from how you would achieve. Remember also to acquire more knowledge. And as I mentioned earlier, life owes you nothing. What life owes you is what you invest in it. If you invest laziness, you reap laziness. If you invest hard work, I promise you, you'd reap results. So please, don't go into this world with a sense of entitlement. Go out there and strive to be happy with the tenacity of purpose, as we say. Hang in there when things are tough. I have had my tough times too. Today, I look back and there are building blocks that I built upon. The good times will come. The bad times will come. The very hard times will come. But in all of it, chin up. Acquire experience. Don't be upset to start from the bottom. Push yourself. Expand on the education you have. Develop your skills. Hone your talent. And as you go out there into the real world, understand that not everyone will understand your journey. Don't expect acceptance from everybody. But that is okay. You're here to live your life. Not to try to make everyone understand you. So in spite of it all, believe in yourself, work hard, the future will look good. A friend of mine remarked that he looks at his future and even at night he thinks he needs sunglasses because he believes it's bright. That is the kind of positive attitude I would leave with you. So go out there, my friends. Learn your lessons. Let those lessons be building blocks for you as you graduate today. And what I can also tell you is that I've told you earlier, long and hard road, but you too can do it. It's not magic. It's not rocket science. It is hard work. It's determination. It is staying focused and staying true to your beliefs. Go out there and conquer. Remember also, after rain, there's a rainbow. After a storm, there's calm. After the night, there's morning. And after an ending, like today, there's a beginning. Chairman of Council, Vice Chancellor, distinguished invited guests, ladies and gentlemen, this privilege of addressing you all here gathered is also for me a moment of reflection that you found it worthy enough to have me come and join you. I am happy that I've been able to share some insights with you. I hope that these few words will prick your conscience as you step out into the real world. I pray that you'll find nuggets of wisdom in the few words I have shared with you today. I congratulate all of you once again for going through this process. I wish you the very best that life has out there for you. May the good Lord guide, guard, and direct your path. May it be well with all of you. I greet you well. Thank you very much.